Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this endgame with a rook against a bishop and also with an extra pawn for the side with the rook. Now first of all about these endgames a safe corner for your king to go is going to be the opposite color of this bishop. So if you have a dark squared bishop, a bishop who goes on the dark squares, you should go to a light squared corner like you can see here. And the logic behind this is really simple. The point is that after you're squeezed into that corner and white gives you a check, you want to be able to block this check with the bishop so it's a really nice guard to your king and white can't lose a tempo here because it's going to be stalemate. As you can see, you can't move your king and you can't move your bishop because it's pinned by the rook. So this is just a draw. And if white tries to do something else, he basically can't do anything because you're just going to be here playing your bishop back and forth from a7 to b8 and it's just going to be a draw. So this is a safe corner for your king here. But now let's take a look at the dangerous corner. This, as you can see here, is a dangerous corner and it's not where you want to be because as you will see now, when white comes closer to g6, uh, you have to play king to g7 uh, so, then, so that after a rook to b8, you can block this check with a bishop. But now guys, what's the difference here? The difference is that now white can wait on this file and it's not a stalemate like before. You still have this one move, king to h8, and you're going to get checkmate on the next move. So that's why this is a dangerous corner and you really don't want to be in this one. So now that you understand that, let's move on to the side with the rook having an extra pawn. Today, we're gonna take a look at the rook's pawns. Now, if the pawn is on the sixth rank, like you can see here, black can actually draw the game. And it's really amazing because white is so much material up, but it's still just a draw. And of course, we're looking at the position where your king is in a safe corner and not in a dangerous corner, because in a dangerous corner, you're losing anyway, with or without that pawn. So here, the drawing move is just bishop to c2, giving a check to the king, so it has to move. The important thing is to just keep our bishop on this b1, h7 diagonal, so we don't allow white to play h7. Well, if he plays h7 now, well then we just take it, and it's a drawing position, like we saw before, uh, we're in the safe corner and whatever he does, it's just going to be a draw. He can't play rook to a8 because it's just stalemate again. And what else can he do? I mean, after bishop to c2 check and after he goes here, we just wait here and he has nothing to do. If he checks us, we just go up. If he checks us, we go back. If he goes to f6, and there's no way white can improve here. If he goes to f7, we just go to h7 and there's really no way for white to win that game. So. With the pawn on the 6th rank, the position is still drawn if we manage to move the R bishop to this b1, h7 diagonal. Now moving on with the next position where white has a pawn on the 5th rank, the difference now is that white's king has access to this h6 square, which he didn't have before because the pawn was there. But the funny part is that this position is still drawn. The drawing technique is a bit different than before, but still, let me just show you what happens if black goes wrong. If he plays bishop to c4, this is just losing. He, uh, his idea is to play for stalemate, of course, after rook to a8 and bishop to uh, g8. Of course, he can't wait because this is just a stalemate. You can't move the bishop, you can't move the king, it's a stalemate. But we're not going to play rook to b8, of course. We're going to play king to g5, leaving the black king space to move forward and now we're going to check him on the 7th rank. Now if he plays bishop to f7, we just play h6 check, and when he goes there we just check him and we just distract the king from defending this bishop, of course, and we just take the bishop with a winning position. So he's not going to play bishop to f7, but he's going to go back to h8. And now the winning technique for white is really interesting, guys. And it's winning all because this bishop, as we saw, left this important diagonal here and it's now here on g8. Not the best place here for the bishop. We can play king to g6. Now our threat is to just play h6 and h7. Uh, so he has to move the bishop with the idea of playing bishop here back on his nice diagonal. And now a really important move, rook to h7 check. Getting this king 
out of this corner so it has to go to g8 and now rook d7. As you can see by playing rook to h7 getting the king out of the corner and then rook to e7 we're now threatening checkmate in one but we're also preventing black from just giving us a check here on e4 because we would just take the bishop. So he has to do something about this checkmate idea here and he has to go back to h8. Uh, the point is that um, he wants to be able to defend like this again, uh, you know, with the idea of the stalemate. But what we do now is we just push the pawn to h6. Our goal, like I said, is to push our pawn all the way to h7 uh, so it's defended by our king and the rook and then just give him a checkmate. And now he can't even check us here on e4, which would be his drawing idea. Because our rook is so nicely placed here on e7. So now he just goes to a2, trying to give us check on b1. But now, what do we do? We just push the pawn, of course. And it's winning, because even if he checks us, we just go to h6. The pawn is nicely protected here. And on the next move, we're going to give him a checkmate here. And it's just over. Let's say bishop to a2, rook here. And we just checkmate him like this. So these are some really interesting lines to show why this bishop to c4 immediately doesn't, uh, sorry, just doesn't work. Now the drawing plan here for black is going to be to temporarily leave the corner with his king. He does that by playing king to g8. Now what's the point here? The point is that if rook tries to check you, well you just go to f7. And you can't move your king forward or anything because this bishop is cutting it, also the king. So you have to check me again and I'm, I'm just going to go back. Now the only winning attempt here for white is to just check the king on g7. And now like we said, our drawing plan is to temporarily leave the corner and play king to f8. But let me just show you what happens if we go back to the corner, which was exactly white's idea to win this game. We just play rook to d7, threatening checkmate here. So he has to play bishop c4, uh, you know that he uh, stops this checkmate. But now we give him a check and now we're in a familiar position that we already know is winning for white. Uh, after we move the rook to the 7th rank, he moves, okay, we again uh, are threatening checkmate so he can't go something like here because he's just going to get checkmated. So that's why here, king to g5. Like we saw before, we're giving this king space to move forward and now what we do is we again check him after he goes back. Now we can play king to g6. The exact same position as before and after he goes uh, here trying to go back to this really nice diagonal, again rook to h7, king goes here, we go to e7, we threaten mate, we defend this check here from the bishop, he has to go back to defend against mate, we play, we play h6, after he moves just h7 and again we're completely winning, we're going to give him checkmate on the next move. Now of course here um, after rook to e7, if he tries to go to f8, you know, uh, trying to use this strategy of just attacking the rook, we can play rook to g7. A really important move, just cutting the king off from this pawn, and now whatever he does, we're just going to push this pawn into a queen. For example, he can check us, but just king to f6, and there's no defense against h6, h7, and h8 queen. So, like we said here, uh, after king to g8, Rook to g7, the only winning attempt for white. King to h8 it doesn't work, as we've shown. But the solution here for black is to temporarily leave the corner with king to f8. Now, whatever white's attempt is, we just move the bishop on this important diagonal here, and there's basically nothing for white to do. If he checks us, we just go back to g8, and white can't advance, there's nothing to be done here for white. Like we said, leaving the bishop on this important diagonal and if necessary, leaving the corner with our king just temporarily. So with that being said, if the pawn is on the 5th or on the 6th rank, it's still a draw for the side with the bishop. But now the question is, what happens if the pawn hasn't crossed the middle of the board? Now, as you can see in this position, the pawn is still on the 4th rank, and here the position is winning for white. And it's amazing that here it's winning and if the pawn is here or here it's not winning and it's a draw. But a really nice plan exists here for white and I'm going to show it to you in just a second. Now here white plays king to h6 just going closer to you know the mating position. And now again if bishop moves out of this important diagonal, like we said we just attack the bishop 
When he moves, we give him a check, he has to defend, hoping for a stalemate, but of course we just play king to g5, and after he moves, we check him, and after he goes back, we go king to g6. Again, the same thing wins here, rook to h7 check, he moves, we go to c7, preventing any checks here, the bishop going back to this important, to this crucial diagonal, and we're also threatening checkmate on the next move. So he has to go back, and now just h5. Because he can't check us again, he has to move here, trying to check us here. And now again, check, rook d7, and now h6. He again can't check us, he has to move, and now h7. And we're just winning, like we saw in this position, the pawn is defended. We're going to checkmate him on the next move. If he tries to defend it, well, okay, we can just play... Um, rook to b7 and we're going to checkmate him on a dark square here there's no defense whatsoever for black so that's why leaving this important diagonal for black is never an option the only option for black here is to basically play king to g8 and now we can see white's winning plan he basically wants to play rook to g7 again baiting black to go back to this h8 square uh, which where again is just losing we can play h5 already and it's just winning immediately because after king to g8 king to g6 we're threatening mate here and he has to stop it with bishop to c6 and now just h6 he can't check us here so that's why the next move is going to be h7 like we saw a couple of moments ago so that's why after rook to g7 uh check here again the king has to go to this f8 square the king has to temporarily leave the corner but in this position, it's sadly not enough for black to save the game, because he has this nice little plan of playing rook to g5. Now white's ideal plan here would be to play something like king to h5 and king to g4, just getting the king out of here, out of the, out of the way of this h-pawn, and then just push this h-pawn up the board, because this king is cut off from defending, you know, the queening square. This would be white's master plan. But the point is that as soon as we play um, king to h5, he has this bishop to f3 check move and we just have to move back. Also, if we go to this g file, he can just play king to g8 because he's no longer cut off by the rook and he can go back into his corner. So it's still a little tricky here for white and he has to be precise. After king to f7, he plays rook to g3 and after bishop to c2, king to h5. Now here again, it seems that black can save the game by playing bishop to d1 check so because we have to go here to g5 and now black can play king to g7. But guys, pause the video here please and try to find the brilliant winning move for white. Okay, so <laughs> the brilliant move here is rook to c3. Now why is this a brilliant move? We're limiting this bishop so much here. The bishop wants to go back to this crucial diagonal here. If he can't protect this diagonal, he wants to protect this g6 square so the king can't be here. And this h7 square so the pawn can't easily go there. But now it's going to be really hard for him to do that. Because he can't play bishop to c2. He also can't play bishop to e2 and bishop to d3. It's also protected by the rook. And... How is he going to get into to this diagonal? It's just impossible. He also can't play bishop to f3. The only way for him is to play something like bishop to a4, but we can just play h5. There is just no route for this bishop to go to this diagonal. Here, again, it doesn't work. Here, it doesn't work because it's protected by the rook. If he tries to go here, well, the king is here protecting it. So there is really no defense for black against this pawn pushing up the board and then also rook to c7 check. And it's just going to be over for black. So that's why here uh, bishop to d1 actually doesn't save the game for black. And he has to play something like king to f6. But now white goes back with rook to g5 and after bishop to d1 check we just go to h6. Well okay the king is now cut uh, from this file but... How does white win this? It's still, the king is still in front of the pawn, right? Well, let's take a look at it. After king to f7, rook to g7 check, the king goes back, rook to g1, attacking the bishop, and after it moves, attacking the bishop again, and notice that he can't play this because the bishop is going to be pinned. He also can't play this because we just uh, win the bishop now. So he has to put the bishop somewhere else. 
and let's say he puts it on d3 here. Well this master plan here of white is shown after playing rook to f2 we kick the king further away further away from this pawn so it's going to be just immediately winning for us if he plays bishop to f5 well we can play h5 let's say and he can't move the bishop he has to hold on to this bishop so he has to play something like this and now we can just take this bishop and then win this uh, king and pawn endgame so he can't play bishop to f5 here after a check he has to move somewhere else and now what do we do we of course just play our king to g7 and the king is cut off by two files and there's no stopping from h5, h6, h7 and just promoting the pawn to the queen. So it's pretty complicated here. It's a pretty complicated plan if, you, if the pawn hasn't crossed the middle of the board. But it is winning for white and, it's, and it would be really useful for, for you to learn this method because it could save you some points. If you like that, please watch more, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.